This is a house we built a couple years ago, and it's a good example of some of the things you can do to build a simple, affordable, energy efficient house. Let's go inside. I came to Vermont in the early 60s to go to school, and there was a real renaissance in the owner-builder scene here. It was, in a way, the beginning of the owner-builder movement in Vermont. There was a wonderful spirit of creativity and freedom in building at that time here in this place. And there were a lot of people using native materials, thinking about solar, uh, building small houses, re using recycled material, and also, I think, using a lot of imagination. We built passive solar houses, we built post and beam houses, we did some timber framing. Usually, by the time I'm talking to them, people have a lot of ideas about what they want to do. The kind of classic architectural approach is what's called the program, where you ask your customers to articulate what they want you try to identify the needs, the way you live, and I also get people to give me a sense of what their resources are like, because what often happens in design is people design extravagant projects, then they have to cut back. It doesn't really work. And then there's the site. It's the lay of the land, where you're going to get water. It's how far are you to the electric pole. It's a lot about the solar orientation, and you're trying to find you know, where on this site you can build that works from a solar point of view. Let the land do the work for you and you don't want to be fighting with what the landscape is. I am still an advocate of conventional stick building. Not in every case, but I think it's a brilliant system. It was the original owner-builder system in the 19th century and it, it, it displays timber framing for a very good reason, which is it's strong, it's fast, it's easy to change, it's adaptable. I think the kitchen is one of the places where there are economies that actually make the kitchen better. An L layout like this is often a huge space saver. The key to a good kitchen layout is that your favorite workspace, the place where, that you love to stand and do your chopping and food prep, is handy to the stove, handy to the sink. We did some things with, with the kitchen but also with the trim elements to make it feel like a more gracious, luxurious house. And the trim here is a good example of that. And it, it, you can see here, it, it creates kind of a division here. You know, how we did these curtain rods. Up here we've got, you know, this little kind of wainscoting. It kind of calls attention to the light up above and creates kind of an area of intimacy below it where the wall is darker. It carries around here, up and around these windows. The porches, in a way, are a very important part of the design because they really extend the house outward. The porch is cheap space, but it makes the house feel bigger. Having lots of light in the house makes it feel bigger. There's kind of a dormer up here that's up high, and it sort of illuminates the whole top of the house, and it just sort of carries your eye up, and also, too, that's our best south window. People come to me because there's something in the way I build that appeals to them and if they go to some other builder they're going to get that builder's take on things. So every house that I do is a little bit like this house. It's what, you know, it's what sort of feels warms my heart in some way.